Hi Greg, this is Evan. Um, I just want to start off by first saying thanks for the opportunity in creating the screencast for the final. Um, I know we've been working on trying to figure out ways, so thanks for this opportunity. <laughs> From what I realize is that in my school district domain, it is unable to share outside of it, so I apologize for that. So let's get started here. Um, so this is my Google Classroom called Pendulum Swing Lab, and basically the idea of this online module is an extension of the core content the students will be learning in the classroom. So even though this online module is designed specifically for the lab, it is an extension that the students are going to be doing in the classroom. However, they're going to use technology such as iPads, Chromebooks, uh, computers to access this information. So this is the about page. As you can see, I have a, um, an introduction. I made it a Google Drive folder. Uh, the kids are aware of the drive and so they know how to access that. So down below I just kind of show all my uh, material that I created and pulled <clears throat> from the district, kind of used a little bit of both so it's relevant to the students and to me for learning. And in just a moment I'm going to show you how I put all these pieces together in a outline for the kids to follow so I become more of a facilitator than an instructor um, <clears throat> in order to show a constructivist approach for this design. So let's go to the stream. So right off the bat um, I have a welcome announcement and basically students can hear a section of me on SoundCloud as a podcast introducing the um, information. This pops up as a, um, a as another tab so students aren't going back and forth and getting lost. Um, as we scoot on down I have a start here so it's kind of like a syllabus announcement so right off the bat um, you can see the science of brain method assessment. If I click on that it's going to take me to a pre-assessment. I want to see what they know with the vocab first. I feel like it is important for them to know the vocabulary in order to complete and understand the lab. And at the bottom, they just go down and obviously submit. And I created a Google form and response, so they are I can track their responses. Then I have a review video. It's just talking about what courses to kind of get them thinking again about what forces and how they're going to apply it into their lab. I won't show the video. It's not as important as the other pieces. Um, right here, I created this overview. And essentially, it's an instructional guide. Um, I allow the students to see that they're going to have group names, tell them what their lab's going to be about, and the goal. So this kind of leads towards the goals and objectives. Um, here is the image I created right over here. So this is a picture that I took of me doing the lab myself, and I'm just giving reference points of how tall the chair is, how far away the pendulum swing is from the ground, how it's swinging, so students get an idea on how they can create their own. And I also list um, the materials here as well. In the online module, if students are more curious about how to create it, they can look at the um, target exemplar, which I'll show that document in a second, on how to create this. The objectives listed right here in the overview and then on the next page is the actual rubric. This rubric was created by the Salem Kaiser School District. I just broke it down into the sections so they understand, okay, I'm at this step, what do I need to do to get a good score? I simplified it in terms that they can understand the information and I list the total points. So each step is what you're going to see in the actual Google Classroom. So this is just an overview explaining what the kids are doing in the classroom. Um, so if I clicked on it, it's accessible. They can pull up and take a look at the targeted exemplar to see how they're going to create their hypothesis, materials, procedure, all the steps to a science and query lab that we do. So with that being said, I'm going to head back over here to Oops, there we go. So with that overview, they then can start and jump in with their groups on the first step. So I display the directions. It's an assignment. Basically, I have them review a PowerPoint that 
talks about how to create forming a question and hypothesis. So they look together at each slide up to a certain point. They have the little clicker down here or tracker to let them know where they're at. So they look at each section of this um, scaffolded PowerPoint. And then what they do is after viewing it, they then apply it to their student booklet. So each student gets a copy, so they don't have to um, remake any. They can instantly just type their name into it and then save it to our uh, lab folder. So all is well. We don't have any students overlapping any other's works or typing or mistyping in other people's boxes. They just have got to make sure their name is right here as well as here so I see their name and their own work from the group in the folder. So it's accessible. They can type. We don't have to worry about missing pencils or missing papers. So each step, according to the rubric, <coughs> is six points. That is the one through six scale according to the rubric. So it is all tied and connected. So I know what I'm grading them on. They know what they're grading them on. It's total consistent instruction. So steps one through four are pretty similar. Um, I just don't include the student booklet because each student has a copy. I don't want them to make copy after copy. So they're just reading the slides, applying it, working on their lab together in their group. However, at this point, what I'm doing here is before they move on to step three of conducting the experiment, I know that most of my students need to have an understanding of how to find the average within a given set of numbers. So I created an exit ticket to kind of check in before they are able to do that step because I don't want them to mess it up because if they mess up that step, then the rest of their lab is kind of pointless. So this average exit ticket allows them to view how to do that and then they take an exit ticket created by Google Forms. And this one says it's already responded. Um, let me jump over to the, um, the about page so you can check it out. One moment. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, all right. Well, I will tell you the, about that then. Um, Essentially, it's one question, and basically I give the students um, the question of someone is walking a certain amount of distance from their home to their car, and they're timing it, and the person does three trials, and each trial is a certain amount of seconds. What you're supposed to do is out of the three trials for the given seconds, find the average, and then record your answer. So basically what I want my students to do is, can they add up the numbers? Can they divide the three numbers by three in order to find the average? And if they can, they can move on to step three. If not, then I need to pull them aside and work a little bit more on it before they can move on to their next step of conducting the experiment. So back again to the stepping, um, step three, the conducting experiment. The students are still reviewing the slides and applying what they learned to their student booklet. They have multiple resources to look for to help formate their own um, responses. Then we're starting to get towards the end. So there's the analyzing clicked data instruction. So they're doing one more step for their lab. And then at the end, I created an announcement to let them know, like, hey, here are your final steps before you complete this module. Read them do them and then you're going to take a post assessment. So I broke down the final steps into two parts. So the part A is a video reflection. So um, after the students have created their work, I want them to kind of think about what they learned, solve any, um, I want them to address any problems they had, how would they solve it, um, and then I want them to create that in the iPad video. So they can use their resources to show, they can just talk about it, and then they're going to post it to this um, section right here. They can add the class comment, and then they can um, respond to two to three other groups and ask, tell them what they did well in theirs. So it's just more of a reflection piece that the students can talk to about themselves to me or talk to one another about their work and see how other students solved their problems to the same um, to the same lab and uh, design features. So this part I kind of graded a little bit more heavy 
So this one's 10 points. The reason why I did 10 points is simply because I wanted to see if, one, they can address what a problem was in their um, design. Two, come up with a few ideas on how to, um, of what they were thinking about the problem. Three, how to solve the problem. And then four, knowing how to upload it and then commenting and sharing on other groups' work. So it's a little more heavy, but it's just a given score that will be easy for them to understand that this is a very important piece. Um, and then I have videos to show how they do that because they will be using the iPads. They know how to record um, the iPad or videos on iPads, just switching it over to the Google Drive and Google Classroom that I want them to review first. And then the last piece of this module is the post assessment. So the post assessment is similar to the pre assessment. Basically, what the students need to do is they need to take it and tell me again what these vocabulary words mean. The idea is essentially, since you started with the lab, you should have minimum to no background knowledge of what these words mean. But coming after through the lab and learning about it and applying it, you should know what these words mean essentially. And that's what I wanted to see what the students know all overall. So that is my Google Classroom module. Um, if you have any additional comments or concerns, just feel free to email me. I will be um, creating this as a link that you can access within um, a Google Outline document I created that I'm going to submit to the to the um, to the final spot for this. So thanks for your time. I enjoyed this class, and you have a great day.